Hi guys, Samantha from Jason My Tutorials here and today I'm going to be showing you a tutorial using a Nautilus stamp and some Swellicut. Now just before we start the tutorial please stay tuned to the end for a cool surprise. Now you're going to want to start out with a sheet of Primo White that has been rolled out on the thickest setting of your pasta machine. Now I'm using my dirty white because it's, you can see it's got quite a few spots in it because the white for this tutorial does not have to be all that clean. So if you have any dirty white lying around, this is a great project to start um, using it with. And I have dusted each side with a little bit of cornstarch to make sure that it is not going to be sticky. So I'm just going to cut this in half. And I'm going to grab my stamp. And this one is called Sand. And I'm just going to start from one side of the stamp and I'm just going to press it in. And you can use a roll-up but I like to just use my fingers because I find that I can get into all of those cracks and um, fissures that are in the stamp a little bit more easily. And it also means that I don't have any ghost images um, by rolling back and forth and having the clay lift up and uh, lay back down again. So. I just find that it's a little bit cleaner to do it this way. Okay, then I'm just going to smooth out the back by rubbing. And then we should be able to cleanly lift that. And this is going to be our texture for our rust. And I'm going to pop that off to the side quickly. Then I'm going to use my other piece of white and a little Nautilus stamp that I have. And I'm going to stamp into there. Then I'll just quickly smooth out. And there's our Nautilus. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly use a circle cutter to cut out our Nautilus. So it's nice and clean. And then for this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my cutter in the middle here, just like that. And I want it the other way around actually. Just kind of in the middle there. And then I'm going to just take a craft knife. And I'm going to roughly trim out. the outside and I'm purposefully making it all frilly like this. Okay, then grab your Nautilus and find the middle and then if there are any areas that you don't like, like I think this area could be a little bit smaller, just go and trim it with your craft knife. And up here also could be a little bit thinner. So just trim it until you're happy with it. Okay, I just want to trim up this end and then we should be done. Okay, and then when you're happy with it, so just bear with me. They're completely happy with it. Once you're happy with it, grab your cutter again that you used for your Nautilus. and trim it out. Okay, and then our Nautilus will go into there, but only later. So now what we're going to do is we are going to apply um, our Swellegant Prep. So just give it a little bit of a shake. Okay, and then we'll open it up and take a little bit on a brush and we'll just dab it around and you don't want too much you don't want big globs of it lying everywhere you just want enough to generously coat the surface but not too much that you're going to be uh, hiding your texture 
and do it on this one and on this one. Okay, and then once it has dried, uh, grab some sandpaper, coarse sandpaper, and gently tap along the edges of your um, donut, just to kind of flatten it out a bit. And you can do this before putting the prep on if you want. And it's also optional, you don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I just think it looks a little nicer. And all these little yellow bits, don't worry about them. I'll fix them in just a moment. Okay. And I'll just go over and maybe press a little bit on the outside just to blend in that line. There we are. Then just grab a little craft knife and work those out. There we go. Okay, and now that it is uh, dry, I want to just pick it up. And it's okay if this distorts a little bit because we're going to be putting it around it and we're going to be squishing it in a little bit. So don't worry if it distorts a little bit. And I'm going to be um, working on just a piece of tissue. I'm just going to place my pieces over there. And I actually want um, to be, them to be on separate pieces because one is going to be... Um, for creating almost like a greenish tint and the other one I want to look rusty so I don't want the two of them sitting together okay so we'll do the Nautilus first and what I'm going to be using is bronze copper and brass it's optional to use all three you can just use the one if you want and if you were going to go with one I would go with the bronze but I like to use all three uh, because it gives me slightly different colours throughout the piece and looks more interesting. So if you have all three available to you, definitely use all three. And you want to be just painting on a thin coat. And we're going to be doing a few coats, so don't worry about uh, brush lines. And now I'm just going to be painting the bronze in some areas, not all of the area, all areas. There we go, and then I'll just clean that off. Pop that away. And if you were just using uh, one colour, just paint the entire surface. But since we're using three, um, I will paint each one in a separate area. So that was the bronze. I am now using some copper. And it's not very easy to see the texture at the moment. Don't worry about that. That will get fixed uh, once we have finished with our swelligans. And don't be afraid to overlap the two. Have some copper on your bronze and some bronze on your copper and so on. Don't be afraid to overlap because that looks quite nice. Okay, and then lastly, I'm going to put just a touch of brass on. And then I'll go and add some brass into some of the other areas. Okay. And then we'll leave that to dry and that will take a little, maybe a few minutes to dry. And in the meantime, I'll show you how to do this one. This one we are just going to be using iron. So if you didn't have many swelligans, I would go with the bronze and the iron. That's enough to complete this project. But if you have all of them, then play around with them a little bit more. So it does not take um, much iron to coat this. We're going to need to maybe have two or three coats. 
And now something that I've learned is that the iron is probably the most dominant um, so elegant. So when you are using iron with some of the other ones, like you saw in the previous one that I used some brass and some copper and bronze, and they're all equally as strong. So one is not going to overpower the other. With the bronze though, if you just added that much to a piece, you don't need to add any more um, layers, you just add that much, it will show up. So if you're deciding to mix some um, iron with any of the other Swellegants, be very um, use very small amounts because it is very strong and it will take over your piece and you don't want that. You want just light accents. So in working with iron and other Swellegants, um, use small amounts. Just thought I'd let you know that since I have been working with them and that was something that I noticed in the beginning. Okay, so that one's going to dry, and this one um, I'll let dry as well, and then I'm going to do maybe one more coat, and if I need to, I'll do a third coat. Okay, so I only needed to do one more coat, and now while it is still wet, you want to apply your patina, and this is the one that I am using. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to grab just a wet wipe. And I'm going to soak it fairly well, and then I'm just going to use that to drop my uh, patina off. And it's just a little bit more controlled, a little bit easier to get to places. And then just dab in the areas where it's not um, at already. Okay, and then I'll take that. And that has already got a little bit of the patina on it. And I'm just going to drape that over, just like that. And I'm going to put that off to the side. And I'm going to just let that sit for about an hour. And now we'll do this one quickly. And before we do that, I just want to quickly close up my patina. And I want to grab my rust. And we'll just give it another coat. Okay, and then while it's still wet, I'm going to use my patina. And I'm using uh, rust this time around. And I'll just grab a tissue. Give it a fairly good soak and then use that to drip my um, patina. And I'm just dabbing. Okay, and you can already see it starting to go off over there. And I don't want to add too much. So then I'm just going to take this, which is fairly well soaked. And I'm just going to drape it over. Okay. And I think I need to add just a touch more. Over there. So I'll just use another tissue to help with that. There we go. And then I'll just let that sit for about an hour. And it should look quite nice. So you can see that it's already starting to go. Okay, so while those are busy patinering, I wanted to show you the piece that actually inspired this project. And here is the piece. So this is hopefully what our piece is going to look like, um, the Nautilus. We're going to highlight it with just a touch of brass, so that it has a little bit of a gold highlight. Um, and then the outside is going to be rust. This is actually gold veined quartz that I made. 
and here is the back using another technique. So I just thought you'd be interested in seeing the piece that inspired this project. Okay, so I've had the sitting uh, in the uh, liquid for about an hour and then I've taken them out and I've let them sit for maybe around 20 minutes just to let them dry because you want the surface to be completely dry. When it comes out of the liquid it's going to look a little bit scummy. Uh, let it dry and then it will look much better. Now I'm just going to take a little bit of brass and I'm just grabbing that. And here it is. I'm just going to pop a little bit on the end of my finger, almost like paint. I'm just going to gently highlight our texture. And I don't want too much, so I'm Around these edges I'm going to add a little bit but I'm also going to rub a good percentage of it away. In the middle I'm going to just highlight it. Okay. Then I'm just going to grab my wet wipe. And I'm just going to wipe these ones around the edge. And don't wipe too, too hard, just kind of dab. So if you wipe too hard, you'll actually end up taking off the swell again at this point in time. So just gently tap it. And what it's going to do is it's going to kind of patina it so that um, it's not so bright. Because we just want these parts over here to be highlighted. So I'll just go around a little bit and I'll just make sure that I've got all the parts that I want highlighted and you can use the copper to highlight it if you wanted to but I like the brass because it's got a nice bright gold finish to it and so I'm just going in and I'm tapping and then I've got a little bit there that's not where it's supposed to be I can generally take that off And there we go, I'm pretty happy with that. There's that nice interesting Nautilus look in it. And then I'll grab the rim. So I'll gently fit that around. And I want this larger piece to be facing down. And I'm just going to be gently squishing it on. There we are. And there we are. Now, this I'm going to re highlight later once we've baked it, but for now, it just gives me an idea of where the Nautilus is so that I can position things as I would like it. Now I'm going to take this and I've got another piece of clay here that I have textured with my sand texture again and I'm just going to place it face down but before I do that I should probably trim away this clay there we are and I'm just going to stretch it just a little bit and this will be our back texture. Okay, and then I'll place that on. And gently tap. And then I'm going to trim around. And then I'm going to put Swellegant on the back, um, but probably only after I have baked this. Okay. 
and then if there's any areas that I accidentally missed I'll just quickly trim that off and I'm just going to press lightly around the edges with a piece of sandpaper like I did before and this will give me a little bit more of a almost like a coin effect around the edges so that it doesn't have that sharp effect where you know that there's a sharp join line and just go around and make sure that you get into all those little crannies and then once this is baked I will probably uh, put iron on it so that we get more rust on the back Okay, and now I'm going to go pop that into the oven on a piece of plain printing paper uh, for about an hour to cook at Primo's recommended temperature and this is what it looks like at the moment we're going to add some embellishments at the bottom with a little bit of chain and we're going to highlight this again once it is baked okay now while that is in the oven I want to show you how to quickly make some copper spirals we're going to want three for our project so I've got some zebra wire and this is 16 gauge as you can see and I buy this, this off of fire mountain gems I'm just going to take a little bit from the spool and what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep it on the spool so that I don't waste any wire and I'm going to grab my round nose pliers and I'm just going to make a very small loop on this end then I'll grab my bent nose pliers flat nose will work as well and I'm just going to um, carry on creating my spiral now if you don't get this perfect that is perfectly fine because we are working with a pretty organic piece okay and then I will stop when I think my spiral is large enough I'm gonna just snip it off and hold the end when you do this because otherwise it will go flying off okay and then I'm just gonna create a loop on this end and then I'll continue wrapping around so that we have a nice looped piece and you'll, you'll make a total of three of these now I'm going to show you how to hammer this out so I'm going to bring over my steel block and I have a rubber block down here and then I have a steel block on this side and this is going to dull the noise but it's not going to dull it completely so when I start hammering I'm actually going to mute the video so if your sound suddenly cuts out that is why it's because I have muted the video so I'm just going to place the spiral on my steel block and I'm going to be using a hammer and I'm going to be using the ball end of the hammer and then I'm also going to use these pliers to hold my piece in place because you don't want your fingers over here because this is going to end up hitting your fingers by accident and then just hammer it out Okay, so I have hammered out my piece. Now you'll take your pliers again and you'll just work it back into place because some of it, it might have got a little bit distorted. That's fine. And notice that I did not hammer the loop. I want to keep the loop nice and round. And so the side that you've hammered will have this nice bumpy surface the back tends to um, just kind of come out a little bit flat and you can see that I have scratches in my uh, steel block here I quite like that because that gives a little bit of texture on the back so hopefully you can see that 
So I'll put this to the side and I'll make two more. Okay, and then when you've done your spirals, grab a cloth, and I'm using a polishing cloth, and just quickly give them a buff on either side. And this will just shine them up, so hopefully the camera will be able to pick up the difference there in the shine. And just quickly give each one a buff, it doesn't take too long. A polishing cloth uh, works best, but if you don't have one of those on hand, just a normal cloth will work. Okay, and then once you've got that done, grab just a cup and grab your Tiffany Rust. And just pour some out, and we can put that back into the um, we can put that back into the bottle later. And just drop each of these in there, and then just leave them there for about an hour to two hours. And it shouldn't even take that long. So um, I'm going to leave them in there for maybe a minute or two. And um, actually, I'll take them out now and see how they look. And the important thing to remember is when you're taking them out, don't use something that is metal. So pliers is a no-go. And a tissue blade or a craft knife is a no-go either. Anything that's metal can potentially rust. So use a skewer. So hopefully there you can see that it's already dulled down quite a bit. And by leaving in them in there a bit longer, you are going to essentially antique that metal, which is what we want. So I'm going to leave them there, and then we'll see what they look like in about an hour's time. Okay, and here is how this one looks now that it is out of the oven. And now when it comes out of the oven, don't stress if this part looks really dark. That is completely normal. Let it cool, and it will go back to its normal color. Now, you might be worrying a little bit about these white spots. That's fine, I'm going to actually bring over some paint and we're going to quickly clean up those areas. And I'm just going to be using this little piercing pin and just uh, this paint. Any paint that looks pretty similar will work because it's a very tiny amount that you're going to need. You just don't want that white shining through. So I'm just going to take a little bit of time to get some paint in there. There we are. And I'm just going to go around in any areas that look quite bright and white. I'm going to take the paint and I'm just gently going to um, cover them up. And then I'll just do that the whole way around. There we are. And that will just tidy up those edges. Now we are going to focus on the back. Now you have an option of either doing the rust on the back or you could just paint the back if you want to with um, a similar color to the rust. I personally would like to put some swelligant on. So again, you'll just grab that prep and you'll put a bit of that on the back. Okay. Then I'm going to grab a little bit of copper and some iron because I'd like both of them in the back actually. So I'm just going to put, actually you want to work with the copper first so I'm going to open that copper first. And then just paint that over the back. And I want a full coat of copper and then I'll add the iron on in the second coat. And make sure that you do the sides as well, you don't want any white showing. Okay. And this is just the first coat. I'll let this dry and then I'll do a second coat. But just make sure that you do go in and get all of those little white bits because that's quite important. 
because you want this to look like one solid piece of metal. Okay, and so that's just the copper coat that's dried. Now I'm going to grab my copper again. And I'm going to give that a good coat. And this is the second coat and I'm going to add the iron on this coat. But the iron is so aggressive that you only need to add it to your second coat. You don't even need it on the first coat. And again, like before, go back and make sure that you grab these edges. And if you miss any spots, it's not a complete disaster, but it just means that you're going to have to go back and you're going to have to paint them. Which isn't going to look as good. It will look okay, but um, it's just better to get it now. Okay, almost done with the copper part. Okay, and there we are, I've given a good coat, nice and wet. Quickly dry that off. And then I'm going to grab my iron, and I've just got a little bit, you can see how small an amount I've got. And I'm just going to add it throughout. I'm just kind of touching my brush around. And I'm going to do it around the edges too. But seriously, you don't need that much. It's not going to be completely irony. So it's not going to look like pure rust. It's going to have a bit of that green copper tint to it. But if you coat this in iron, it will just look like rust. So just be sparing with it. So I'm just touching it around like so. Quickly dry your brush. I'm gonna grab a little tissue for it to sit on. And I want that to be flat. There we are. Then I'm going to be using uh, the Tiffany Rust. And I'm just going to gently pour it onto the back here. Okay, and you can use a skewer to help move it around to different areas by just touching. Like so. And this time I'm not going to put a wet wipe over it. I'm going to leave it just the way it is. Okay, and I'm just getting it to spill over the edges so that we get some of that um, liquid on the edges. Because we want the edges to rust as well. And now I'm only making one, but if you're going to be making multiple pieces, which is what I presume you guys would do, um, you would use this tissue over and over again. So you wouldn't waste any of this um, patina that you have. You could have that over pieces to give it a slight rust and things like that. So don't go and throw this away. Now I'm going to put that over to the side and that can sit for about half an hour. And in the meantime, we're going to check on our little spirals to see how they are looking. And they are looking to the point where I'd be quite happy with them. So I'm just going to take those out. And again, remember to use a skewer, not something that is metal. For an example, let's just use this piercing pin here. And there, hopefully the camera can pick up on the bottom there that it is turning brown. So let me just sit that in there just a second longer. 
and hopefully the camera will be able to pick up that that end is a lot browner than that end. So don't put metal into it. And I'm quickly going to dry them. And then you can take that um, patina and you can just pop that straight back into the pot. I don't find it does anything bad to it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and re-hammer these because they've lost a little bit of their texture. Okay, and so I've hammered them out and here is how they should look. Now the last thing you need to do before you can use them is just go and make sure that these spirals are properly closed. because Some of them might be a little bit open. But there we are. They kind of have a little bit of a shine to them still, but they have this nice kind of rusty outside which will match up with our piece. So I'll just put them to the side. And this is what our pendant is looking like so far. So you can see that there are a few spots of green showing up and we've got some rust. So that's looking pretty nice so far. And here is how it should look once uh, your liquid has evaporated. And it kind of looks scummy, so I'm going to take a heat gun and just show you what it looks like once it dries. And that is what it should look like once it is dried. So you can see all the colours starting to come out. And here's what the front looks like. Now what I want to do is I want to just quickly highlight um, this Nautilus again, just to bring it out a bit. So I'm going to open up my brass. And I'm just going to pop a little bit on the side here. Over to the side here and I'm just going to brush it over the surface and there we go that's how it should look and now I've got a little bit along the sides which is what I wanted and so now the entire thing looks really nice and the back also looks really nice and you can see how different um, the back looks from the front so Swellican is really unpredictable and the nice thing about the back looking like this is it can actually be a reverse pendant so we could wear it on both sides now what I want to do is I want to just seal our um, Swellicant so I'm going to be using Swellicant clear sealant I'll just open that up Just going to put a little bit onto a sponge. And that's how I'm going to apply it. Yeah. And this will look, this is better than a brush because then you don't get brush strokes and it's um goes on nice and even and cleanly okay and I will do the same on the back and you don't need much it's just there to seal in the swellicant so that it's not going to um, rub off on the clothes or things like that so just make sure that you do get all of the areas you want to make sure you get the sides and each um, side needs to be done properly okay and you don't need a lot so just go around apply it as you like and then what I like to do is I like to then go and put this in the oven for maybe around 15 minutes at pre recommended temperature and that will dry out our um, sealant and then we can get onto assembling our piece okay and here is how it will look 
hopefully you can see it's got some nice cracks and things like that and makes it look really grungy now if you want to bring out a little bit more of the color you can put some renaissance wax on top so I'm just gonna grab some of that wax and here's the bottle and I'm just gonna gently apply this and now this is completely optional I just like to do this because um, it will bring back some of the color renaissance wax won't seal the uh, swell again all that well though if you've got a lot of it on your piece so it's definitely better to seal it with the clear sealant and then once you've got that clear sealant on I like to apply some renaissance wax and then I like to buff it brings back some of the color and so I'll do that for this side as well okay so it looks beautifully grungy but at the same time it's got a slight sheen to it which is exactly what I would like and now with the buffing you're going to need to work it you're going to need to have that buffing wheel going over there and you're going to actually be pushing against it to buff it out but I'm quite happy with how that looks so now I'm going to be using a pin drill to drill out a hole for a piece of chain and I'm going to need three holes this thing's making noise, there we go okay and it should drill through cleanly just like that. Okay, that's one. Now I want a hole on either side. And this was what our copper spirals were for. We're going to be dangling three pieces of chain and on either side of each. And at the end of each chain we're going to have some copper spirals. And we're also going to have some shells, which I think will look quite nice. Okay, and then once you've got those three holes, you'll take three jump rings, open them up, and pop them through those holes, like so. Then you'll take your chosen pieces of chain and your longest one will go in the middle so you'll open up your jump ring and pop your piece of chain on and then take your jump ring and twist it around so that that opening of the jump ring goes inside and then repeat with all the others just open them up, grab your piece of chain, slide that on, close it up, and put your jump rings opening back into the hole in your bead. Okay, after that, you'll take three more jump rings and your wire spiral just open up those jump rings grab your spiral and attach it to the end of each of your pieces of chain and then close it up okay then next we are going to take these little open shells that I have and we're going to grab a jump ring pop that 
through the shell like so and then we're just going to pop it on at random loops and this will look better once it is hanging okay here's another one and then I'm going to put two on each chain and then I'll show you what it looks like there we are now I'm going to just turn it around and we are going to line up this hole over here I'm just going to use this quickly to help me just going to line it up so that I know where to drill my next hole so that we can start stringing our piece and again remember to stay tuned until the end of the video for a giveaway okay and again you can see how the back could be used as a pendant as well okay now grab a jump ring open that up it through and then I have a bale that I would like to use so I've got that jump ring and I want to open this up this is just a smaller jump ring attach it to our pendant. There we are. And then just let me position this so that you can see how it looks. There we are. And it's very free flowing. And I'm very happy with how it's looking. Now I'm going to just pop that to the side so that we can assemble the necklace separately. And I've chosen out three colors of cord so that I can highlight separate sections so I've chosen one to uh, bring out the rust one to bring out the uh, green areas with the copper and the bronze and then some areas are a little bit more black like where the bronze was so I've got this really dark brown and so what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna trim this because I was busy testing something out as to keep it together so that I can use it. So now we have three equal pieces and so you're going to want two cord ends and just grab two of these cords and they should be able to fit inside one of these little cord ends and just squeeze it shut and now these cord ends are going to be hidden by a um, by a um, cone, and I'll show you what that looks like in just a moment. I just need to squeeze these shut. There we are. Then I'm going to use an eye pin, and it essentially is just a head pin with a loop on one end. And I'm just going to pop these little cord ends on there. And then I'll grab our cone. Fold that through. And bring it up. And that will hide our um, cord ends. Then I'll bend that eye pin. wrap it around my round nose and 
and trim. Okay, and then I will bring over our glass. And the clasp will just get attached to the loop. Nice and easy. There we are. And that is one end of our necklace. Now what I want to do is I want to plait these. So there's no easy way for me to show that in the video. But I'm sure all of you know how to plait your cords. So I'm going to go plait them. And then I will finish this end the exact same way I did this end. Okay, and so I've finished plaiting this. But before I put the cord ends on, we want to string this through our bale. And this can be a little bit tricky. So I'll string one at a time. One. and if it's giving you a lot of trouble and it won't go through you can always use something like your drill to push it through okay then get it through and um, if you can see this end's got a little bit of blockages so you can just use your drill to get rid of those blocks like so and these should go through fairly easily then once you've got it threaded through you can very easily um, finish it off but before you do just trim the ends just to make sure they're nice and equal and then you'll just do it like the previous side you'll just grip two cord ends two cords and then pop a cord end onto them Very nice, simple and easy, but a very effective way to finish off this necklace. Okay, and so I decided to show you the actual view of the necklace on a necklace stand because it is really hard for me to show it uh, on the tile. So here is how it would look when it is finished. And so let's just zoom in and have a look at some of the details. So there's our initial pendant. And you can see that these end pieces look really nice on it. And the bale and the cord look really nice too. So that's what our entire piece looks like. So that is basically it for this project. And so for those of you who have been waiting, we will now get on to what will be in the giveaway. And here is what will be in the giveaway. So you will receive a full set of circle cutters. You will receive the two stamps that we used in the tutorial. You'll also receive a pin drill and the bead that actually started this project. So if you would like to participate in the giveaway, please comment below, like, share and subscribe. And at the end of the week, I will let you know who won the giveaway on Facebook. So if you would like to know who won, please um, follow me on Facebook as well. There will be a link to Facebook in the description below. And for those of you who enjoyed the tutorial, please let me know in the comments below as well. And I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye for now.